It's on. It's on. There we go. Sorry. Um, I'd like to call the December 14th uh, school board meeting for social service city schools to order. If you would please join me in prayer. So today, one of the great things that we look forward to at our December meeting 
is an opportunity to recognize our REACH Scholarship Award winners. So at this point, I'd like to call Dr. Wanda Shane Watkins and Ms. Tammy London up to the podium. The REACH Scholarship is something for all of us to be very proud of, and we appreciate the leadership that Dr. Watkins and Ms. Lumpkin uh, demonstrate in making sure that we're finding great candidates for these awards, and then also making sure that we've got the funding for it. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, we are so excited. This is our fourth year of participating in the Rich George Scholarship Program. This scholarship program is the first scholarship program for the state of Georgia uh, in terms of being a fee based and mentorship program. The students who are selected, they go through um, an interview process, there's application, but there's a lot of behind the work, behind the scene work that goes through this process. Once these students complete high school and complete the REACH uh, Georgia scholarship requirements, they will receive a $10,000 scholarship that they can use to go to any college or university here in the state of Georgia. Uh, we would like to say a special thank you, and I see a couple of our donors here on behalf of the board, on behalf of our superintendent, we would, and our entire community, because it takes a village for these students. All of us have to be part of this process. We want to thank all of you, our mentors, our donors, uh, for your support for our students. At this time, Ms. Lumpkin is going to do an introduction or give you some information about our scholars. I'm not going to steal my thunder. One of the great things about our scholars are they are also very active in other extracurricular activities. We have a middle school game going today that we're going to win. So some of them <laughs> may not be able to be here at the beginning, but hopefully at the end of the program, when they join us, you'll be able to see them. Thank you. Good evening. At this time, we do have Emily Campbell here. I would like to introduce our class of 2028 REACH students. Emily, will you and your family come up front, please? We also have Mason Fuller, who is one of our basketball players, and hopefully will be here shortly. It's a tight game going on over here. <laughs> and Zariah Reed, who her coach just told me that she's in the process of changing and heading this way. So at this time, I have a pledge that I need to read. Reach scholars. Please signify I will as I administer the following charges. Scholars, will you commit to keeping good grades, attendance, and behavior? Commit to meeting with your mentor and your academic coach and commit to graduating from high school and college. Break. <laughs> Reach parents, please signify I will as I administer the following charges. Parents and guardians, will you commit to supporting your students as they progress through the program? Will you also commit to attending REACH events, meetings, and programs, contacting your student's academic coach or counselor if there are issues that you believe should be addressed? Great. Congratulations. We are so very proud of you, and we look forward to all of the ways that you are going to excel and let us know if you need any additional help and support. This is a big deal. So for our REACH scholars, this is a commitment that if they fulfill all of these promises, that at uh, when they are in college, on top of the HOPE scholarship, that they will receive an additional $10,000. And the Dally family is in the corner there. I would like to thank you for your continued support of our students. And Campbell family, would you mind sticking around for just a few moments so we could get a picture of Emily with the other students when they have an opportunity to arrive? Thank you. I'm sure they'll be here shortly, and we can probably get that done in the break. The other students have signed the commitment pledges um, that include those criteria that we 
So, so we know that they've agreed to it, and we're looking forward to getting the photograph taken of them when they get here. So, Campbell family, thank you for sticking around for a few minutes. We're going to take care of us when they arrive. And thank you so much again for our generous community support folks, as well as the leadership that Dr. Watkins and Ms. Lumpkin provide. And we look forward to all of the ways that the high school and these students are my graders next year are going to help to be great partners and supportive and in helping make sure that these students are a success. So we have a few comments that we wanted to get through in the program updates. And one thing that we wanted to note is that we are about to embark on our Christmas break, and our middle and high school students are in the process of completing midterm exams, which they're not very appreciative of at this point. However, it really does a great job in helping to prepare them um, for success at college when they leave us. Um, at, our, at our younger grades and at our, our upper grades as well, we're still making sure that we're fitting in lots of fun and <coughs> celebrations. We have challenged all of our students to make sure that over the two week break that they take time to read. So please, 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 anything that you can do to encourage reading over the break, we would appreciate. We don't want to lose any of those games that we've experienced over the last months. And we certainly hope that everyone has a safe and joyful holiday season. We are very blessed here in Social Circle to have so many generous community members who have really been incredible when it comes to any requests that our team has had to help support our families in need of help, including a family who recently suffered a fire at their home. We're so very blessed that here in Social Circle when someone needs something, people are there and ready to offer help. So thank you again for all your generosity during this holiday season. Lots of our families are going to have a really bright holiday because of the generosity of other people here in the community. And while we're waiting for our other Reach Scholar to join us, I'd like to give you guys some updates on the accountability processes that we use here in Social Circle. Carrie, would you mind if we jump ahead to that part and then we'll come back to Dessa? It's okay. Ms. Morris, do you mind waiting just a few moments? Not a bit. Okay. <laughs> so we use quite a few accountability measures here within the social circles in the schools in order to measure our impact uh, to the strategic plan that we've identified as a community. We are constantly checking to see how our students are doing compared to the commitments that we've made to you. And several of the measures that we use um, are impact checks, our superintendent's advisory committees, and also our student shadowing experiences. So I'd like to give you an update on those things. Our impact checks are a really important opportunity for us to hear directly from teachers. So several cabinet members and I meet with the leadership teams at each school. And the leadership teams are representatives from each grade level or department area at the high school. And it's a great opportunity for us to hear directly from the teachers. We urge our principals, please don't share. We want to hear directly from the teachers about how things are going. And we meet with them at least two times a year. And it, they provide updates on um, any of our formative test result data. We look back at graduation updates. We want to hear about successes and opportunities to improve. And our principals, uh, as we've looked to even improve that process, have made several requests and suggestions about ways that we can improve the impact check process. So for example, this uh, semester at the high school level, our teachers asked if all of the teachers could meet with the cabinet members. And so we set aside additional time and really looked forward to getting to hear from all of the staff members. And so we're, we're doing the same process with our elementary and our primary school teachers as well. That feedback is really important. We also have advisory councils. So we have a parent advisory council and teacher advisory councils. And our parent advisory councils are include uh, family members from all of the different schools. And so our principals help to make recommendations about uh, the membership of those 
those groups. But also, if we have parents who express concerns to us throughout the year, we always offer for them to join our parent advisory councils so that they know that they've got a ready and easy opportunity in order to have um, time to share directly with us what's working and, and the ways that we can improve. Another advisory council that we really, really look forward to has to do with our student advisory council. So we have an elementary, a primary, a middle, and a high student advisory council. And we get the opportunity to be with those kids several times throughout the year. And it's a great opportunity, again, for them to be able to speak directly with us so that we are aware of, of what it is that's going on in the schools and the ways that we can help. And we know that if we listen to our families, if we listen to our children, if we listen to our teachers, we're going to continue to improve and, and really improve the educational experiences for our students. Another favorite thing that we do each year are our student shadowing experiences. So the principals help us to identify a student in each grade level, and then a member of the central office signs up to shadow that student. And we spend time with them from the moment they get here at school until the end of the day. And we always tell our central office members, please make sure to wear tennis shoes that day because you are going to be exhausted by the end of the day because of all the moving around. And we look forward to this opportunity because it helps us to have a check about all of the things that we're saying with our strategic plan, all of the skills and the competencies that we're talking about with our fortune of a graduate. Are those things really happening in student experiences? And so after we follow the students, we take notes throughout the day, and we come back together as a central office team, and we compare the experiences to what we actually saw, our reality, to what we're saying is happening and what we aspire to be able to do. We use those experiences as we're doing budget planning for the next year and as we're making strategic planning decisions about our improvement goals for the next year. So we wanted to make sure that our community was aware we are checking, we are accountable, and we want to make sure that we continuously improve. So if there are members of the community who would like to share comments with us, please make sure that you reach out. Uh, we would love to hear your opinions and positions, and again, want to make sure that we're continually improving. And we're very lucky. I think our third reach student, our basketball athlete, has arrived. <laughs> Dr. Brewer, can we scoot? Maybe so I can make sure that I can get everybody. Put the reach scholars in the front. There we go. Put 
tall people behind me. <laughs> 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 Yes. And Bonnie has. Bonnie has.
as the Sanford plant indicated, our board was also recognized for the Leading Edge Award from the Georgia School Board Association at the recent conference. We understand that we play a pivotal role in preparing students for future jobs, and we make tremendous contributions to the economic growth and the prosperity of our community. We help to continue to strengthen and expand our partnerships with our local businesses, our industry, and our community organizations. These partnerships help us to provide valuable resources, mentoring opportunities, and real-world student experiences. We couldn't do this effectively without the support that we receive from the Development Authority of Walton County. We'd like to thank Shane Short, the Executive Director, and Ms. Dessa Morris, the Workforce Development Director, for their dedication to the success of our students. We've asked Ms. Morris to share an update with our board regarding their work and the incredible opportunities that are available here in Walton County. Thank you very much. It is my pleasure to be here. I'm sorry that Shane is not here. He is out on medical leave, or he would be here. He is very much in support of our work, as is the entire development authority. So um, just quickly, I was hired by the Development Authority of Walton County six years ago following a tense meeting, someone here may have been in that meeting, <laughs> um, between local industry and our school system leaders. Um, the school system leaders were asked to be quiet and listen to industry. I'm not sure what happened, it was before I got here, but I know they created my position and my job is simply to break down silos between industry and education, get everybody mixed up, liking each other, working together, and pulling in the same direction. So it is the best job ever to do this in my adopted hometown. You may can tell from my accent, I didn't grow up in South Georgia, but um, I got here as fast as I could. So it was a privilege to visit with your teachers um, during pre-planning to correct an error. I had been saying all last year and all summer that we had 8,630 new advanced manufacturing jobs coming to our community. I was wrong. It's actually 10,000 plus um, new advanced manufacturing jobs coming to our community. Those are new jobs as well as our companies that are expanding. And then if you look to our south, I'm a little geographically challenged, but um, and all the cool things that are happening in Newton County, my favorite is um, the Archer Aviation. They have like those Jetson drones. They, um, elect they electric vertical take off and fly you around. They're going to be flying me to the airport soon, I hope, dropping me off. I'm not really good with traffic. I don't know about you guys. But um, anyway, and going to the Atlanta airport stresses me out. But this whole thing is exciting, but a little bit scary. So I want to make sure we're all on the same page, we're all working together, leveraging all of our resources to make sure that we're ready, to make sure that our children are ready for these opportunities. So one of the first things we um, did for, for this school year, we were selected to participate for the Georgia Department of Education's Economic Development Partner Designation, and your CTA Director, Erin Robinson, is um, taking the lead on that. And um, I was like, man, we gotta do everything we can to make sure we're ready. We need all the smart people helping us um, to make sure that our children are gonna benefit from the opportunities that, um, that are here and coming. So um, that's fun. They'll be here, I think, in March to make sure that we get that designation. And I, you know, I like to win. I like to, so we're uh, hopefully gonna do great. We have um, 18 of our educator externship alumni are still part, are part of the social circle team. The educator externship is a project of the um, Development Authority and Walt Works where we take educators and they spend a week, they spend a day learning about our economy and what's going on here in Walton County, and on three days inside an industry. Let's face it, our educators usually were good at school, you liked school, you went to school, you went to some more school, and you came back and you work in a school. So we figured out educate these guys, these rock star educators, then they can help influence our students and they see what skills are needed um, in our companies 
and for our children to get these great jobs. So um, hopefully in the new year, we've applied for a large federal grant with Newton and Clark counties that will be able to expand that educator externship program as well as pay for some work-based learning students and some of these advanced manufacturing jobs. I have to tell you, Julie Brand, your work-based learning um, coordinator, is a rock star. I love working with her and she has certainly um, raised the bar and uh, as we're getting, she's ready, it's getting industries to let these students come take advantage of work-based learning, that, that is the problem. So I'm the problem, she's the, she's the giddy up, I'm been the way back and I'm working to keep up with her. Um, but there are lots of these educator externs that are making a big difference. And I just wanted to share um, in closing that um, an email that I got today from fourth grade teacher Emily Clay through a partnership that um, Aaron has facilitated. Emily was, is an external alumni. But um, today, her fourth grade students listened to Mooseltoe by Marjorie Pelotoni. They were given materials to construct their own Christmas tree using specific supplies, and the trees must be eight inches tall. Some new measuring tapes were recently donated by the Development Authority because one of the leading problems our companies say is that our their new employees do not do well with precision measurement. They also have a little trouble with teamwork, sometimes you know, feedback and those sorts of things. But in fourth grade today, they built these Christmas trees that had to be eight inches tall. They measured them, they worked together in groups, and they, we were gonna make sure that the students that come out of social circle do not have, um, that employers are not complaining about their measurement skills, their group work, their, um, all of the things that you guys are working so hard to make sure that our students are able to take advantage of um, these amazing career opportunities that are coming to our community. So thank you for your partnership. Thank you for letting me be a small part of your team. I love it here and appreciate all of your work and your partnership. So thank you. Out of respect for everybody's time, Odessa just shared a real small fraction of the work that she does with us. Every time that we go to Dessa and say, we need something, we have a crazy idea, could you help us to figure this out? Dessa always comes through. Um, we love being her pilot facility, so when she has a crazy idea about something, she comes and pilots it here with us. She works in really close coordination with Crystal Sanford, our Student Success Alliance coordinator. And one of the great things that we do is that we're able to say that no student graduates from Social Circle without a plan. And one of the reasons that that happens is because we've got Dessa Morris' support, and she helps to connect us with the area industries. So our students, when they get to the point of their senior year, if they don't have a plan for work, but they know that they want to go straight to work, Dessa gets together a team of folks who help with interview practice and resume writing and making sure that the students have the appropriate clothes for an interview. Several of she helps with Crystal to make sure that we have retired employment experts in the community come in and conduct practice interviews with the students. And then we also make sure that we have quite a few of our local industries here to do interviews with the students. And so all of our students who graduated, the students that participated in those interviews with real companies with high paying jobs right here in Social Circle and um, in other close areas here in the Walton County community, they all had multiple job offers. And so we're really proud of that work and we couldn't do it without you. We appreciate all the expertise that you shared when we were developing our portrait of a graduate and the feedback that you shared with us from our industry leaders. And thank you for helping us to um, assure our industry leaders that we're gonna have students ready, ready for those 10,000 high paying jobs. Thank you. And we also need to make sure that we thank Mr. Randy Carithers, as Ms. Stanford mentioned at that GSBA conference. He was recognized for 25 years of service on our school board, which is just tremendous. He was one of 
those um, in the audience who can claim that. Our team really appreciates having Mr. Carruthers' expertise. He helps us to understand how things have happened uh, around here, gives us great suggestions about who we might talk to when we need help, and certainly really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Maybe I'll get it by next December. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a few items for the board to consider this evening. Uh, first would be, we have an action item to approve the re resolution to phase out our current social circle elementary school as, a requ as required by the Georgia Department of Education. Dr. Brewer, would you provide us in, uh, more information on this resolution? Certainly. This is a process that is required by the Georgia Department of Education. The primary school had been phased out in prior years, and as we enter into the next steps of our process, we'll be combining the primary school and the elementary school, as well as one grade level from our middle school. This is a process that we need to follow in order to continue along with our building processes. So we're excited about this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Weber. Um, do I have a motion to approve this resolution? Do you have a second? I second. All right, any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right, motion to reach unanimously. Um, we have an action item to approve the proposed 2024 board meeting calendar. Do I have a motion to approve the calendar as presented? All right, do I have a second? I second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. All right, motion carries unanimously. We have an action item to, to approve the proposed fiscal year 25 budget calendar. Do I have a motion to approve this budgeted calendar as presented? So Do I have a second? I second. Any discussion? 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed like sign? Motion carries unanimously. Um, we have an action item to approve the photo speed enforcement program as requested by the Social Circle Police Department. Um, I would like to make a motion that we table this until we have the ability to discuss further at a retreat in January with the Social Circle um, Police Department and Social Circle City members. Do I have a second for that motion? Second. Is there any discussion on that? All right, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, like sign. All right, motion carries unanimously. Um, we have an action item to approve an overnight field trip for the high school baseball team in February. Uh, uh, February 16th and 17th. Do I have a motion to approve this field trip request as presented? Do I have a second? I second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed like sign? Motion carries unanimously. We have an action item to approve the personnel recommendations from our superintendent. Okay. Perfect. All right, so we have a certified resignation from Mr. Vincent Sneed. Um, and then from our certified positions and our classified positions, recommendation for hire of the Douglas Bennett and India Jordan for aftercare and accepting the resignation of Jamie Tarkins. Do I have a, uh, a motion to approve these recommendations by our superintendent? Do we have a second? I second. Any discussion? All right, motion carries unanimously. And then we also have a motion to approve the substitute teacher recommendations from our superintendent. And those would be recommendations for hire of India Jordan, Kelly Teal, John Wheeler, and Shannon Wood. Do I have a motion to approve these uh, substitute teachers? So moved. A second? I second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, the board has no items to discuss in closed meeting, therefore we will not enter into an executive session. Do I have a motion to adjourn, adjourn the meeting? Sorry. Do I have a second? I second. All right, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you.